delve to a, a few national issues and then uh, come down here. But at the national level, there are basically two or three matters that are of concern. One, I, I wish to, on my own behalf and on behalf of the Azimio Fraternity in the National Assembly, uh, send our heartfelt condolences to the family and friends of the fallen youth Rex Masai. As you are aware, this uh, young man was uh, killed literally in cold blood by the police uh, last evening uh, during or in the aftermath of the uh, peaceful protests uh, over the, uh, the discredited finance bill 2024. We take great exception to the a blatant abuse of uh, police powers to stifle the exercise of constitutional rights by peaceful Kenyans. It was really unnecessary for this young man to die in the manner he died. If the police would have cared to follow the law, these young boys and girls were a threat to nobody. They were not a danger to peace. And it was evident from the time they started to demonstrate up the time it ended. They were unarmed, they remained peaceful, and it was basically the police that uh, subjected them to all manner of torture, including being uh, subjected to water cannon, uh, tear gas, uh, police truncheons, uh, name it. So we must condemn in the strongest terms possible the blatant abuse uh, of the police uh, by those who are in charge to basically stifle civil rights uh, with impunity. So we are treating uh, Rex Masai as a martyr. It's a hero who has died uh, in the cause of the fight for uh, human dignity and freedom. Indeed, the death of Rex Masai is only comparable to that of Steve Biko uh, in 1977 in South Africa, in apartheid South Africa. So what the apartheid police did to Steve Biko in 1977 is what the Kenya police have done to this uh, young man, uh, Rex Masai, in 2024, under a new constitutional dispensation in the Republic of Kenya. So we shall demand, of course, that uh, those who are involved, the entire command structure, and the person who pulled the trigger, are brought to book in the shortest time possible. We don't want to hear any excuse whatsoever. And let us also advise the police or those who are involved in policing generally as commanders and as those who give directives that these things will come back to haunt them. Uh, the law will catch up with them in the fullness of time. They may think that they are operating under some kind of cover, under some kind of protection. But when push comes to shove, when the time comes, when the hour of reckoning beckons, they will be left to defend themselves alone. I can assure you. I can assure you. And it won't take long. Uh, secondly, the government must commit to protect uh, Kenyan people's rights, especially as they demonstrate under uh, the provisions of Article 37 of the Constitution. And now that they know for sure 
that there will be similar demonstrations next week, especially on Tuesday, when the finance bill is coming up for the committee of the whole house. What I'd want to urge the police and the government is to basically put in place mechanisms and measures to protect these protesters, to secure them as the law and the constitution dictate. But again, more importantly, I don't want, I think it is going to be irresponsible for anybody in office of responsibility in the government to take for granted uh, these are latest uh, are pricing by the young Kenyans. Anybody hoping that this uprising is going to fizzle out on its own uh, could be basically daydreaming. I see Omina signs from where I sit. And it calls for very, very, very swift action by those who are concerned to address the grievances that are being voiced by these young Kenyans. Because as you can see, these demonstrations are basically operating, I mean, happening organically. They are, they are basically happening, I mean, spontaneously across the country. There's likelihood that in the coming days, they will become more and more pronounced. More and more pronounced. And therefore, I think the government must move with speed to address the issues being raised by these young Kenyans. As a matter of fact, I think the time is now ripe for Kenya, Kenyans to uh, engage in a national conversation. The national dialogue that happened in Bumas had a very limited scope. But now, given the, what is happening currently, the emerging scenario calls for a more comprehensive, more inclusive, more elaborate national conversation. And the leadership or representatives of these young Kenyans, the Gen Z, must be involved in that conversation. The leadership, representatives of the young Kenyans who are out protesting must be involved. They must be brought to the table in this conversation. Because I think the finance bill 2024 was just a trigger. This, there are clear signs of pent up emotions, pent up frustrations that Kenyans and especially the young ones have lived with for far too long. So it was just waiting for a trigger. And the finance bill 2024 has been the trigger now. So any responsible government would not wish this thing away, would actually move with speed and uh, try to deal with the root cause of this upheaval. Because as I said earlier on when I was in Vihiga, these young Kenyans don't care. They can actually overthrow the government, given a chance. They have no qualms sending the government home. Okay? So before we reach there, or to, 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 to avoid us reaching there, let the government take the initiative uh, to, to bring uh, everybody together for a, mo a meaningful national conversation. On the Finance Bill 2024, the Azimio coalition's position is very clear. It remains unchanged. As members of the Azimio parliamentary group, the National Assembly, we remain resolute. But I must also take this opportunity to thank those brave 115 members of the National Assembly, both men and women, who against all the odds came out to say no to a draconian piece of legislation. As you could see, even those of us who had veered off earlier on, who had wandered into the uh, Kenya Kwanza territory for one reason or another are slowly coming back. In other words, the chickens are coming home to roost. 
okay? The honeymoon is over for the Kenya Kwanza administration. The hour of reckoning has come. And so I want to appeal to all to all those others who are still remaining on the other side to take the earliest opportunity and cross over. I foresee our numbers swelling systematically as we move forward. The numbers of the Azimio of troops in the National Assembly and I believe also in the Senate. Because you know for MPs it's a question of them and their constituents and their voters. And I can tell you without any fear of contradiction that the feeling of the Kenyan voters regardless of whether those voters are from Azimio or Kenya Kwanza strongholds is the same. The feeling of the Kenya, Kenyan voters with regard to the cost of living is the same. Kenyans across the width and breadth of the country are feeling the burden, the burden of the cost of living. And they are saying they can no longer bear any more taxes in addition to what they have already. Kenyan workers, like some of you in the media, or all of you, are suffocating, really. Because there's nothing to take home at the end of the day. Nothing completely. All that your earnings are going to taxes and levies. Who unto you if you are, if you are servicing a loan or a mortgage? You're literally living on negative salary. I know. It's the case with almost everybody else in the public service and the private sector. So, so, so anybody uh, being deluded that since I am a Kenya Kwanza MP, I am an UDA MP, uh, that I can go against the grain, that I can go against the wishes of the voters or the Kenyans generally, is basically uh, uh, digging in their political graves. I can tell you. So I foresee, and mark this word, I foresee in the coming days, weeks and months, a trooping of people from Kenya Kwanza back to Azimio. And even those who were never in Azimio previously would be coming to Azimio. If only to be in sync with the uh, mood of the country. Okay. So for us, our position remains the same. Uh, we are going to continue to oppose this uh, finance bill even at the committee of the of the whole and we are appealing to members of parliament from across the political divide to see sense and uh, uh, join uh, our ranks for us to do justice uh, to our people now back here you know we have talked a number of times about the systematic marginalization of the Luo community. This trend has persisted in nearly all the administrations that have been in power since independence. In fact, it is worsening. As we speak now, even institutions of higher learning, respectable institutions of higher learning, such as the University of Nairobi, are basically falling into the trap. The trap of joining in the bandwagon of Uluo bashing. Because otherwise, how else would you explain the draconian decision to scale down and virtually close, shut down the the University of Nairobi uh, Kisumu campus. A campus that was brought into being by through the efforts or uh, largely of, of the late uh, Professor Magoha, then CS for Education, amongst other uh, stakeholders. The Kisumu campus of the University of Nairobi has been doing very, very well. 
In fact, I know of a number of people who have undertaken their studies here and graduated successfully in large numbers. So then what explains, what, what would explain the decision to, to, to close this really, to close this campus? If not to, to basically perpetuate the, the marginalization of the local community. Because we know for sure the benefits that accrue from the establishment of this campus here. The benefits that accrue from the establishment of a university campus in a town or a city are too obvious to be labor. Economic, social, and many others. As a matter of fact, this campus was not making any losses. Indeed, the premises are actually owned by the university. They're not paying any rent. The university purchased that property, that iconic property on, on which the campus sits. Now they are not bringing students, they are not actually bringing students from coops, they have scaled down and they actually stopped the campus from even uh, uh, bringing on board mod uh, module 3, uh, what do you call it, yes, yes. students, those parallel degree uh, uh, program students. So they are eventually, they are basically strangulating this campus with the, uh, the intention of eventually shutting it down and maybe selling off the property and squandering it. Okay? So I think I need to, to, to advise or to caution really the management of the University of Nairobi. If you are hearing me and the Ministry of Education, please stop, stop any thought of closing down this campus in Kisumu. If you truly mean well for the Lu people, banish the idea that you can casually close down this university campus. So this is basically a notice. We are, this should serve as a notice to whoever is concerned at the university and the ministry that as the leadership of this region we are not going to take it lying down any decision to close down this university campus